why don't we why don't people open a toy shop for visually impaired or some special person? So expeditionary learning uh, is about uh, discovery and exploration. Uh, it's about critical thinking, collaboration, um, and it is about uh, learning uh, by engaging with the immediate environment. It is about learning by engaging with the community. So uh, maker space is something that fits in very naturally with expeditionary lear learning because maker space is also about exploration. It's also about collaboration, problem solving, and creating products that are of uh, that that serve a real need in the real world. So we, our uh, grade 4 students recently uh, ended an expedition on toys. Uh, so this is an expedition where they make a lot of toys. They learn design and engineering, they learn about materials. Uh, they also study toys as historical artifacts. So they study toys from various geographic regions and various time periods and they try to interpret uh, the kind of society from which this toy has emerged. Um, so we, we brought in maker space into this expedition and um, the, the classrooms actually became design labs where they, uh, they experimented with cardboard and, and uh, circuitry, paper circuitry, they used buzzers. Um, so they, the design challenge for them was to create toys uh, that would uh, lend themselves uh, well to be played by children who are visually challenged of their age. That was the design uh, mission. So um, children actually went through the entire design thinking, um, the, 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 the design thinking process where they interacted with visually challenged children and their teachers so that they are able to understand uh, the, the needs, uh, their needs and the kind of toys that they, they would like to play with. Um, they, they, then they, they went through several iterations. They actually learned how to use um, uh, texture, how to use sound creatively. Uh, into these toys, they redesigned some of the existing popular toys. Uh, so, and and then they they got a lot of feedback down the line. They actually went through Braille workshops in order to learn uh, the use of Braille. Um, and then uh, and then we had hundred uh, more than hundred children coming in from uh, uh, visually challenged children from uh, from the All India Confederacy for for the Blind, and they they came into the to the classrooms. There were play hours which were designed with our children. Uh, they played with the toys which children had made, and then they they offered feedback. Uh, so that's that's how they went through the entire design thinking uh, cycle, and they actually used what they learned. Uh, they actually used what they learned in the makerspace labs. Um, so it was beautifully integrated. And now these toys, uh, which are finished products, have been sent to various NGOs and various schools uh, to which visually uh, challenged children uh, go to. So um, I, I, it, it, was, it was really wonderful. And uh, uh, makerspace and expeditionary learning worked so well together. It, it was like a natural fit. for the visually challenged people so they can feel equal to us and uh, this is a glove and this is the ball so they can catch the ball with this glove and this uh, ball has some velcros in it So this is a snakes and ladders which are made for visually impaired children using ice cream sticks for ladders and bowl for snakes and I have written the braille numbers here and um, when I was testing it they, they usually kept the pawns with some other block like if they were 25 they kept it on 26 or 24 so I got this solution, I put glue on the boxes so that they can feel it and they don't go on the other box. And I have made the pond with uh, different materials like this is from a leaf, this is uh, a plain pond and this is from a paper bag and this is wood. And I have made this dice which has grains inside it. So when you roll it, it gives a faint noise and you can locate it. But you just have to rotate it a bit so you get the correct name.
individually challenged children, uh, we realize that design thinking process can really uh, you know, fit and gel along and sync with the work that we are doing in the classes. So the first step first was to have the teachers experiencing uh, makers, you know, in their own sense and really getting into play arts and explore materials, really have this thinking time where they are able to think and they will take that thinking to the classrooms also. So which is why the play arts were introduced to teachers. You know, we had to figure out one problem we were planning to solve and then we came up with a uh, strap which could be tied around the shoe so that whenever uh, it hits something in front there is an obstacle so the buzzer buzzes and they understand okay this is not where I'm supposed to be and you know you take a turn right. so we ended up that and then there were teachers who got into making of a walking stick right you mm -hmm. made it so we had good fun we got to learn so many things and uh, yes it built the confidence in us to take it to the children and how to take it to the children so the maker space basically was new for us and the kind of experience we got uh, from after doing um, this uh, design thinking here and it got translated inside the classroom that that was really uh, meaningful yeah. basically mm -hmm. and enriching for the students uh, so uh, and we were able to execute it really well inside the classroom.